And thank you again, everyone, for joining us. We're going to be talking uh, in today's program about Martinez cosmology, and our special guest today is Mary McGovern. Mary is a teacher and translator at the Martinez Institute in Copenhagen, Denmark, and has lectured on Martinez cosmology in Scandinavia, the US, and the UK. She studied translation science and lexicography at the University of Copenhagen and published two academic papers on translating Martinez. She graduated in music from the Guildhall School of Music and Drama in London in 1976 and subsequently trained as a teacher of the Alexander Technique. She was the editor and translator of the English edition of the Martinez Institute's magazine Cosmos from 1980 until 2000. And she has translated a substantial number of Martinez's books and articles into English. Mary hosts the Martinez Cosmology podcast, and we are thrilled to have Mary here with us all the way from Denmark. So welcome to you, Mary. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for um, inviting me. Um, I would like to share my screen, so I'll see if that works. Yeah, that looks like it's, it should. So I think um, many of you will, uh, will never have heard of Martinus. So I thought I would intro introduce him. Just see if I can find the next slide. Yeah. Um, this is a picture of Martinus taken in 1921. He was born in 1890 and died in 81. I managed to meet him in uh, 1978, 79 and 80. Um, at the time when I couldn't speak Danish, he um, only spoke Danish. <coughs> um, Martinez was a spiritual writer. He uh, is the author of a large number of books. His main work is Leave It's Book, The Book of Life. It, he wanted it to be known by its Danish title, Leave It's Book, but it means The Book of Life. And he's written many other works, The Eternal World Picture uh, in six volumes and Logic and about 30 other works. So there's, there's quite a substantial um, number of works. And his collective works are, um, they're collectively entitled The Third Testament. So all, all of his writings are included in that title. Um, he also drew, uh, a hundred symbols, and I will show quite a few of those uh, this evening. So, um, in uh, Martinez had a very simple upbringing. He was um, he was born in the north of the Jutland Peninsula in Denmark, in the country. He was brought up by his uh, mother's brother and his wife, um, and um, yeah, under uh, in very poor circumstances, and he had a very very little um, schooling, just a few hours uh, in, this, in the, a few hours a week, really. So um, he, uh, he didn't really study, but um, when, he, when it came time to work, he worked mostly as a dairyman, making butter and cheese and that kind of thing. And uh, at one point he moved to Copenhagen and uh, he worked in a dairy in Copenhagen. And there he met a young man who was reading a book, um, a theosophical book. And um, this young man talked to Martinus about it. And, uh, uh, and this young man thought Martinus might be interested in it. And uh, Martinus borrowed this book. And, um, but it, the book belonged to another man called Niebelwang, a flautist and a bit of a, and quite a philosopher. And um, Niebelwang said, yes, you could borrow the book, but he had to come to him to collect it. So he did that. And Niebelwang looked at him and said, you will soon be my teacher. And Martinus didn't understand that at all. Um, uh, anyway, the book suggested that one could meditate on the idea of God. And um, Martinus tried this. He put on a blindfold and he sat in a wicker chair and um, he got a, a very, very intense spiritual experience. 
um, he saw this figure. This this is a very famous statue of Christ by the Danish uh, sculptor Bertel Thorvaldsen. He saw this figure in the distance as a very small sort of light, shining light, which became alive and moved towards him in two sort of impulses. And during the second wave, so to speak, it, it entered him and um, extended throughout his body and through the ceiling and through the floor and completely changed his consciousness. And of course, this wouldn't mean anything to anybody if, um, if it didn't result in, I mean, it wasn't just for him alone. He, he um, realized some spiritual truths that he felt he had to convey to mankind. Um, and if we summarize what it was he experienced during that uh, experience, it was, he was, it was 1921, he was um, 30 years old. He, he experienced that we are all absolutely immortal. We cannot die. Even though the physical world, where the physical body disappears, we are, we are immortal. Um, he also saw that we are actually all one living being. We appear, we appear to be separate. We appear to be individuals and we are individuals, but on another level, we are all one. He saw too that the universe or what the religions call God is one living being of which we are all an integrated part. He also saw that our present uh, stage, our present level um, of uh, evolution is just a temporary step in evolution, that our evolution hasn't finished, it's ongoing. We are developing towards higher and higher stages. And um, he saw that there are more highly developed worlds and there are less developed worlds. And then he saw too that the, um, this idea of evil, and this is a big question for the religions and for our daily understanding of life, we experience very many very unpleasant things. He said that from a cosmic perspective, everything is very good, but that doesn't of course mean that everything is very pleasant. And he distinguishes between the pleasant good and the unpleasant good. When he says that everything is good, that is from an eternal perspective, from um, this very, very large cosmic perspective. From a local perspective, things can be really, really horrible. <laughs> but because they serve a divine purpose in developing our humanity, our humaneness, our uh, wisdom, our knowledge, then they can be said to be good. But uh, that mustn't be take, taken cynically. I mean, at the moment, there's a war going on in Ukraine and other places. There are lots of problems around the world. We've just come through a pandemic or we're not quite through it. So there's an enormous amount of suffering in the world. And all this so-called evil, evil is not meaningless. This is what uh, this implies. Really, There is a meaning behind all the suffering we are experiencing. So, um, yeah. Man is searching for a meaning, really, and uh, I'm rather convinced that Martinus helps us understand that there is a meaning. He also experienced um, that um, uh, to get access to cosmic knowledge or total initiation, yeah, the only way to do it is to become totally loving. If you're if you're not a completely loving being then you, you won't have access to cosmic knowledge. So it's only by improving morally that you can become initiated. So the road to initiation is a question of moral development, a question of becoming more loving. So after this experience, Martinus became his own source of unlimited knowledge. He experienced that if there was any question he had about life, he just had to formulate the question and he had the answer immediately. Um, and he, he found there were, there were no limits, like whatever he focus, focused on, he got the answer. And um, he saw too all the spiritual laws and principles behind the physical world. And he became conscious in the life of the whole universe. Now this could sound that Martinus is really boasting, like he said, look at me, you know, I can see all this. But he's very, very quick to say 
that he's no different to the rest of us because either we've been there ahead of him or we will get there eventually that everybody everybody without exception will reach this state where we become the source of our own knowledge will we'll become um, totally all loving and this all loving state will give us unlimited access to cosmic knowledge and to the spiritual laws and principles behind the spiritual the physical world so he says he's not one jot better than the rest of us it's just a question of where one is on this um, scale of evolution um, so as i said he wrote a lot of books and articles he gave a lot of lectures um, but he drew a hundred symbols and here you see him as an elderly man in 1965, so he must have been 75 years old here. Here he's drawing one of his symbols. Um, and we'll look at some of those today. Just to say a word about um, the organization uh, here. The Martinez, this is the Martinez Institute in Copenhagen. Um, Martinez had a little office before that, but in, in 1943, he had the possibility to buy this. Uh, it houses uh, the administration and meeting rooms, teaching rooms, a lecture hall. This is our publishing house where we publish our books and, the, and our magazine Cosmos in quite a few languages, including English. Um, and we have a bookshop and the top floor there is a museum that was Martinez's flat. That's where he lived. And you can see our homepage there, martinez.dk. Uh, so this is the administrative center and 60 miles northwest of Copenhagen up by the sea. It's actually where I'm sitting at the moment. Um, we have this Martinus Center and this is our main teaching center where we have courses most of the year, but our main courses are in the in the summer. Our busy season is the summer season. And we have some we have two weeks of courses in English in the summer and um, six weeks of courses in other languages. And we have online courses and weekend courses and so on. You can find our program on Martinus DK. But I'm, I'm here at the moment at a translator's conference. So, so what was it Martinus? Um, so this is one of his symbols. This is a symbol of the living being, the living being one. There's also living being two, but we'll stick with this. And he describes the individual's identity as being triune in three parts. And uh, can you see my pointer there? Um, you can see this white triangle at the top. This is what he calls the I, I as in I am, not this kind of I, but the I as in I am. This is the very core of our being. This is the center of all of our experiencing and creating. This is, um, I can say, I am hungry, I am tired, I am uh, very happy, whatever. It's this I. Um, but this I can't experience or create life without an ability to, to experience and create life. And this is this section, he calls, uh, calls this X2. So the I is X1, the ability to experience and create is X2, and a lot of details in that. And then X3, this part, lower part, is the organism and the consciousness through which one experiences life. So we have a core of being, an I, an ability to experience and create, and an organism and a consciousness through which we create. And our consciousness consists or is built up of six so-called basic energies, which he calls instinct which is behind all automatic processes. Think of the plants, they know how to grow without thinking about it, so to speak. Um, all the reflexes in our bodies. Gravity, that's a funny name for that one, but it's, uh, it has everything to do with physicality. Uh, and on, an, on a mental level, it has to do with aggression and the killing principle. Feeling, which physically is coldness, but mentally is the, the warmth um, and humaneness. Uh, uh, of the human heart. <laughs> Intelligence is green, intuition and memory. And these energies make up our consciousness and our organism. And here we see that this, this orange circle, this, this symbolizes that we are inhabiting an animal organism at, in this picture. So we have this triune structure and um, 
so does God, so to speak. So this is a, a this is a symbol called the eternal world picture, the living being two, the eternal Godhead and the eternal sons of God. There are a lot of details in this symbol, but I can't cover them all. But it's basically what I want to say with this symbol is that God has the same structure. God cons consists of all living beings in existence. There, there's no living being that is outside of God. So all living beings are within the consciousness and the organism of God. So if we take this middle part, the white color, and you can see it's like a disc behind the whole symbol. Um, that's the eye of God. Again, the eye as an I am. The, the core of God's being, so to speak. And then we have this violet area around here, around the edge and the, the rays in the middle. That's the Godhead's ability to experience and create. And then we have um, the created part, the minerals, the plants, the red bit, the animals, the animal kingdom, the orange bit, and the human beings belong to this second, latter half of the animal kingdom. And then we go into spiritual realms where we find the real human kingdom, the kingdom of wisdom and the divine world. So we are about here where you see the earth in evolution. We have passed the culmination of the animal kingdom and we are longing towards the light. We are, we, darkness bothers us. We want to get away from darkness. We want to get away from killing and hating and being intolerant and impatient and all those things. And um, uh, many of us are really striving to find a way out of the darkness. But Martino says it's guaranteed. We will all, all get to this point where the star is. Uh, he says 3,000 years for the whole of mankind. Many will get there before others. Um, but um, in 3,000 years, he says, uh, in, in the whole of mankind will have cosmic consciousness. That means they'll be totally loving and have total uh, personal access to the solution to the mystery of life. So we will all get there. But at the moment, we're going through a rather dark time. So this is a very similar symbol. And we can see that we are about here in this evolutionary process. And here you can see a sort of, it looks like yin and yang going around the edge. You can see this black bit and the white bit. And this symbolizes that, that um, we are experiencing darkness at the moment. We, we have passed the culmination of darkness and we are gradually evolving out of it. But uh, darkness has a very important role in, my, in, in um, Martinez's uh, uh, view because without contrast, we couldn't experience anything at all. Um, I mean, if I didn't form some sort of contrast to the background, if I was the same color as the wall behind me, you couldn't see me. So contrast on a very banal level is, is absolutely essential to, be, to experiencing anything. Um, but also mentally, I mean, if something hurts, uh, it's such a relief when it stops hurting. Or if some, something is dark, uh, uh, you can only experience the darkness because you, you have experienced light before that. So um, this principle of contrast is absolutely essential for experiencing anything, whether it's sound, whether it's uh, sight, whether it's wisdom or ignorance and so on. So this is where we are at the moment. And um, these basic energies that you see in these rhomboids here, they are changing and um, we are growing in humaneness. We see the yellow cut growing towards the next, the next kingdom. So we, we're becoming more humane and the green is growing. That was intelligence. So we're becoming more wise. So, and this uh, shows that um, it's not a, a circle, but a cycle. Here we are in evolution in, in this, I don't know if you can see the letters, it says A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We're in this middle one, which is D. So um, mankind, uh, where these sort of white teeth are, so to speak, that's, that's where, where we are in evolution. We are, we are in the latter half of the animal kingdom and we're heading towards the real human kingdom. But then we will spend aeons of time in very high spiritual worlds, but we can't be there forever because at some point our um, 
ability to experience life will will die out. We'll get a sort of whiteout. I don't know if you if you've driven in snow, but if you're I, I come from Scotland where there's a lot of snow, and if you're driving and everything is white, in the end you can't see where the the contours of the road are, so you have to stop because you just don't know. You can't orientate yourself. So when we get cosmic consciousness here and we enter these spiritual worlds and we have wonderful uh, time here uh, for aeons of time, but sooner or later, our consciousness begins to lack contrast. And that, that of contrast, this um, um, stimulates our entrance into a new physical world on a higher plane where, where it hurts to act immorally. And it's this, um, these consequences of the, our immoral actions that create the necessary experience so we can experience life. So the darkness actually only exists in, in one half of the animal kingdom. So it's like one twelfth of the cycle. But it's something we have longed for. At one point we longed for it because it was necessary for the re renewal of our consciousness. If we didn't experience darkness, there would be no eternal life, no, no renewal of consciousness. But we don't experience any more darkness than we absolutely need. So, so this symbol is called intolerance. And this is very much the situation we're experiencing in the world now, where yeah, there's a war going on in Ukraine, there are wars in, in lots of other places. There's, um, uh, there are fights between individual people. Uh, you can have arguments with people at work. You can be fighting with your husband or your partner. And um, so it could, these two stars can be two groups of people, two nations, two individuals or whatever. And what we're seeing is that their, their intolerance their, of one another is blocking their experience of this light that is shining, this love that is shining out throughout the universe. And it results in this world conflagration that you see here. Here the world is on fire. Of course, it's symbolic, uh, but in some places it really is on fire. So um, getting rid of intolerance is what will open up one's receptivity to this universal love that always is there. And here we see again um, this road towards the light. We are about here in evolution. We're um, heading towards cosmic consciousness which is symbolized by this yellow star. Um, and um, yeah, if we see on this little figure on the left, we see the cosmic unconscious beings view of a living being. He only sees the physical part, but there is a spiritual part which the cosmic conscious being can see. So what we're seeing here is the evolution from the mineral kingdom to the plant, to the animal, and the terrestrial human part of the animal kingdom to the real human kingdom to which uh, someone like Christ belonged. Um, so we can see that behind the organism, there is this uh, structure, this ability to create and experience and this I that experiences and creates. So again, we have this three part structure. And here we have the birth of this principle of prayer. When the animal is, um, in trouble, it cries for help. It's a sort of unconscious conscious cry for help. But this um, develops and we begin to get language and we put it into words. And um, ultimately our ability to pray or, uh, will be a permanent connection with uh, the universe, with God, with um, yeah, eternity, infinity. But more about that later. So let's take a, a quick look at um, what drives our evolution uh, through this spiral cycle of evolution. That's the law of karma. And uh, we see this um, line in the middle with these um, oblongs, these rectangles, orange rectangles that go from dark to a bit lighter. They're all orange. That means that we're in the animal kingdom here or the unfinished terrestrial human part of it. And um, the yellow color means the past, the green is a future, 
and the, the now, the present, is the violet bit. So what we see in the present is that we are sending out karma waves. They can be pleasant, they can be unpleasant, and some of them come back immediately, some of them come back in a few days, some of them come back in a few years or whatever. At the same time, we are receiving karma waves that were sent out in previous lives, maybe the last life or two lives ago or three lives ago or four lives ago or 50 lives ago. And at the same time, we are creating the future. So the karma waves that don't come back to us in this life will come back in the next one or in two lives or in three lives or four lives or in 50 lives, whatever. So in the now, we are actually in connection with our eternal past and our eternal future. So um, this is a, the sort of law that drives evolution. The karma waves here are colored violet, so they're neither. So they're both pleasant and, un un and unpleasant. Um, but here we see some karma waves that are orange, so they are very unpleasant. And we see here uh, this uh, reincarnation, the principle of reincarnation. We see life after life after life after life after life. And the yellow squares are our stay in the spiritual world between incarnations. And we see this heart and triangle in the middle. <coughs> and we see that, um, yeah, that symbolizes a living being, could be one of us. And here, this living being is hit by a very tough karma wave. Someone could be very critical of you, or they could um, kill you, or come with some sort of very negative remark, anything of a negative nature. And here one responds in the same way. So this is a principle of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So you answer in the same way. And you see that this situation is perpetuated from life to life, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, and it goes on and on. So you remain in the animal kingdom. And it's this attitude of eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. And I can actually say that, I mean, that, that was the law of Moses, and um, it was actually an improvement on the situation before, where um, there was rain, uh, pure barbarism, where, where um, uh, it wasn't one eye for one eye, it was like a whole head for one eye, and so on. So <coughs> with an eye for an eye, there, there, there was some sort of balance in, in things, but um, um, it's, it's not a guarantee for happiness by any means. And this eye for an eye attitude uh, ends in these, this world conflagration that we see behind uh, the karma waves. So we see cities that are, are burning, we see natural catastrophes, uh, we see uh, this, um, skull and cr this skeleton symbolizing a belief in materialism. So but that's not the end of the story. Here we have a symbol called the forgiveness of sins. And of course, it's a biblical term, but the, the, in the absolute sense, there is no sin. Um, there, are, there is only ignorance. We don't know what we're doing. Christ said on the cross, uh, forgive them for the, because they, know not, they don't know what they're doing. Uh, and that's really true. Um, here again, we see our past our present and our future. And we see this ladder of evolution. We are improving um, uh, by the minute, so to speak. And here we see in this life between these two thick white lines, we see a dark karma wave that's being sent out and comes back in the same life. It could be that you kill someone and then someone kills you. It could be that someone says something very nasty about you or you say something nasty about someone and, they, and then someone else says something nasty about you. So it could be all levels, all degrees of uh, negative action. And we see it could actually wait and come back in the next life or in two lives or in uh, three lives here, three lives later. And we see something has happened in the meantime. We see this flame has grown. This flame symbolizes humaneness or neighborly love. And the, the more um, we, experiencing, we experience the returning 
unpleasant karma for the unpleasant things we have inflicted on others, the more that we, we begin to get empathy uh, for, for other people. And the more we, we learn not to have the heart to, to be so nasty, <laughs> to be so unpleasant and unkind and come with all our negative kid, killing energies. So if I've done something in this life, for example, that I wouldn't have the heart to do, I wouldn't dream of doing it in three lives time, then my faculty of humaneness will dissolve this um, uh, dark karma wave. Um, it doesn't disappear, it'll come back in, a, in the plant kingdom in a higher spiral, but uh, that's another story. But it's just to, just to say that the more we learn from our so-called mistakes, our ignorance, the, the, the more pleasant our life will become. So here we see um, another situation. We, again, we see this principle of reincarnation, life after life after life. But we see an evolution here. We see that from being in the animal kingdom, the orange color, a little bit of yellow is coming in. That's the, the, the uh, really human kingdom. So uh, we can see more and more yellow coming in until it's completely yellow. And that, that symbolizes that we get rid of all our animal killing negative habits and become totally all loving. So if we see this living being again in the middle, this uh, triangle and this heart, we can see the two people are shaking hands. So here this negative karma is hitting this person, striking this person, but the, the person here has enough insight to see, okay, well, I must have been like that towards someone else. Or just like if you get a phone bill, uh, you don't kill the postman or give the po say it's the postman's fault. It's the, okay, it's, I've been ringing abroad uh, so much and so on. That's why the bill is so big. It's, it was me who, I mean, who created this large phone bill. So in a way, the, the people or the circumstances that, um, that give us these, um, that bring these negative impulses back to us, they are only the messengers. So don't kill the messenger, so to speak. So if one can meet this messenger, however unpleasant, and there is extreme unpleasantness going on in the world at the moment, then um, one can try and see a meaning in it and one can turn the other cheek. And in practice, of course, it's very difficult. But to, to meet a difficult situation with forgiveness and understanding, and in the beginning, maybe one doesn't really understand it and one can't completely forgive with one's heart, but at least one can theoretically forgive. And that's a step on the way. We can't learn to be all loving just uh, at the click of a finger. So, but the more we practice this, the better we'll get at it so that every reaction, every meeting with our neighbor, will be based on total love, total understanding, total forgiveness. And then we'll, you, we will get a consciousness like Christ that's uh, symbolized in the middle here. And the, the more uh, we evolve towards this state, the more the clouds will disappear from the earth. All the darkness we're experiencing on the earth will dissipate. So this is a symbol of the unfinished human kingdom, and we could say that it's more or less where we are at the moment. And um, the red patches symbolize different countries. The number is just purely symbolic. Um, and we can see they've got different figures in them that symbolize the, the different cultures. And uh, the white circles with the arrows symbolize their governments. And we can see that uh, two thirds here, and again, the number is just symbolic are worshiping these, um, the, the killing principle symbolized by these two orange stars. So this is when you believe in an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, you believe in killing as the solution to problems. Here in the upper third, we see um, uh, more humane countries where they're more inspired by this yellow, uh, impulse, which is humaneness, neighborly love, which has been stimulated by the principle of world redemption, which you see on the top here, where the orange color symbolizes the, um, the primitive 
so-called primitive uh, religious. By primitive, I mean that they're based. They have killing as part of their worldview or or their ceremonies. For example, there are some religions that involve animal sacrifice and so on. But then the the yellow the yellow color here symbolizes the humane world religions such as Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, and so on. And the white symbolizes um, spiritual signs, which Martinez is a representative of. So is the humane world religions have stimulated a lot of countries to develop in a humane direction. This development is not complete, but we can see these countries are pointing more or less in the direction of humanity, or humaneness. Um, and uh, we see here this current karmic situation for mankind. Again, we see this division into thirds, which is symbolic. We see here this, um, this third, and we, we see this uh, karma wave uh, hitting this part of the population. This is the kind of situation where you die immediately in a war. And um, uh, Martinez describes that actually as being a slightly lighter form of karma than this one, which is where you can be disabled and handicapped and mutilated by war, and but go on living. So you could, you could, um, uh, yeah, I mean, if you think of a soldier in 1920s old, I remember the British soldiers coming back from the Falkland Islands. Uh, some of them were so badly burned, but they're only 1920 and they, but they didn't die. So they had to spend the rest of their lives with these atrocious injuries. So in a way it's a tougher fate than, than being killed outright. And again, we see this third where, uh, where one is not so keen on solving issues uh, by using killing, but tries to find more peaceful solutions. So this symbolizes civilization and culture and um, yeah, arts and science and so on. So um, it's all leading somewhere positive, says Martinez. It's leading to the perfect human kingdom of the future. That's the name of this symbol. And here we see again these different countries with their, like, with their governments, these arrows. And we can see that they're all um, pointing towards the middle. This sun in the middle is a future world government. Martina says that we are actually one world, but we, we don't have a, a mechanism to organize it at the moment. He talks about the development of the United Nations, that that, that will get much more power. Um, at the moment, you know, um, if, if, for example, yeah, I live in Denmark here, if someone broke into my house or whatever, then I can call the police and get help. Um, and they will come and deal with it, hopefully. Um, but if, if one country invades another, for example, there's no world police you can ring and say, yeah, come and help us. Um, but this, Martina says that this world police will come and a, a police, a world police force will, will be necessary, of course, in the transition until we all are totally loving and um, where war, war would be unthinkable. So here we have, this, he, he predicts that this world um, government will begin to take form in, uh, yeah, in some hundred years. He says, in, he's not very specific about the time, but he says, um, in 500 years, this world government will um, adopt the Christ principle. And I, I can only imagine that he means by that, that it's um, the principle of forgiveness. So I imagine here we will have more and more experts in conflict resolution, uh, resolving conflicts without violence and so on. The blue star symbolizes that the, the members of this government will be totally initiated. They will have cosmic consciousness. They'll have direct access to the solution of the mystery of life. The triangle symbolizes God. So one will see God in everyone and everything without exception. So the different governments are sort of basking in this sun that, oh, sorry, that's emanating from um, 
this world government. In this beautiful harmony between intelligence, the green color and humane feeling, which is the yellow. So this is the future and um, it's very much stimulated by the humane world religions, but uh, more and more people will want to understand why, how does all that work? And this is where cosmic science or spiritual science comes into the picture. And there's a lot of one push say by that, I'll go on. So this perfect human kingdom will be free of things like envy, jealousy, covetousness, intolerance, hatred, thoughts of revenge, arrogance, contempt for others. And you could make the list longer and longer. So if one wanted something to work on, one could look at oneself and say, well, am I envious? Um, do, am I envious about what other people have or what they can do and the opportunities they have? Am I jealous? Jealous is a difficult one, um, especially if um, your partner leaves you for someone else or something. And Martina says, says an awful lot about the evolution of sexuality, but we won't go into that today. Do you look at other people's possessions and uh, covet them? Are you intolerant in, to any degree, any degree? Do you hate to any degree? Um, maybe it's just a mild irritation, but yeah. Do you, do you feel you want to take revenge? Are you arrogant? Do you feel content for others? And uh, I don't expect anybody to answer these questions, but uh, they're questions one can ask oneself. And you can sort of weed your consciousness gradually, like you would, like a garden would, a gardener would weed, weed a flower bed. So you can gradually, well, I don't want to be envious. And um, you can, of course, use prayer to help one get rid of these characteristics that one doesn't like in oneself. Um, Matthias describes this darkness that we're going through at the moment um, if in the following way. I have a, a, a quote here. He says, the great events taking place in the present century are the death struggle of the animal kingdom in the terrestrial body of society. They are the beginning of the emergence of the cosmic human kingdom on earth. And he goes on to say that this can't happen without bloodshed. Um, and he paints a picture of the first and second world war. And then he says, but from these corpses, the world will arise in a new transfigured form and the earth will become a vibration of reason and love, a harmony of intuition and bliss. And we can ask ourselves, how can one keep one's balance when we're dealing with this situation? Um, Martino says that our fate is the res result of our actions returning to us from our surroundings. And our surroundings um, are all part of God's organism and consciousness. So actually our fate is a result of our relationship to God. So when we meet other people, animals, trees, flowers, uh, uh, forest fires or floods or whatever, we are meeting God in one form or another. Um, Martinez uh, has written a little book called The Mystery of Prayer, which I really would recommend. A little, little book, and you can find it, you can read it free of charge on our homepage, or you can buy it in the paperback. But um, he said that prayer was very important to, to help us keep our balance in difficult times. And he talks about two kinds of prayer. That's what we normally call prayer, which is telepathic prayer. You sort of think about, it's in your thoughts. But prayer is also in our physical meeting with our neighbor. So if we improve our relationship to our neighbor, we're actually improving our relationship to God. So, and these two things have to match if prayer is going to work. So there's no, no point in sort of telepathically um, promising God to be good and loving and so on, and then going out and being really nasty to one's neighbor. So those two things don't match. So then the prayer can't be answered. So, um, so you can use prayer to get, to get support, to, in, to, to promote our loving sides and to inhibit our intolerant, unloving sides. We are like Sphinx beings. We're part animal, we're part human, but we're on our, on our way to becoming totally human. So um, 
the idea is that we become what Martinez calls a cell of peace, where we can all be cells of peace and create peace within ourselves and around us. So, yeah, that was the last slide. A lot of slides, a lot of symbols. <laughs> so, um, perhaps we could open up for questions if, um, if people have any. Uh, this is Judy Patisher. Am I heard? Hi. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, I would like to say I very much enjoyed this lecture. Uh, it certainly is an intelligent approach to the workings of the universe. Uh, it is also the message that the universe is a loving place, as explained by you and how it will be. And it makes us aware that we have a responsibility, each of us, to become in harmony with that loving universe. And depending on where our consciousness is, what that will look like. But uh, it's such a wonderful message to know that, yes, indeed, it's a loving universe. And, and thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, yes, because it, I mean, it doesn't look very loving if you're, if you're, if you're, <laughs> right. if you're very right. ill or if you're in a hiding out in a in a bomb shelter or whatever but um there is another perspective on it so i mean my heart goes out to everybody who is suffering but um there is an, another perspective too so yes and you look and you mentioned that suffering is actually what helps us develop our kindness quotient yeah yeah and we have to get our kindness quotient up to 100 percent in order, in order <laughs> yeah, to a lot of lifetimes a lot of lifetimes <laughs> yeah yeah we can't do it in one lifetime um so but it, it's good that we have many lifetimes ahead of us so um it, martinez talks about developing talents like i'm a violinist i was a violinist originally and um so i know about practicing and you know, the more you practice, the better you get. I was rather encouraged to, to read that Martina said that it takes three or four lifetimes to become a, a virtuoso musician. That put things into perspective for me, <laughs> made the whole project less um, hopeless. <laughs> uh, but it takes many, many more than four lives to become a Christ being or a totally all loving human being. We, 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 have, we have trained our animal habits. I mean, killing was a very necessary part of being um, an animal. I mean, animals have to kill in order to live. That's their natural behavior. But if, uh, but if we are to be happy, if we are, are going to have a, a pleasant life, then we have to get rid of those animal habits. They're no longer appropriate. They're killing us in a way. Our killing habits are killing us. So, um, and I, one of the things I didn't mention in all of this, um, is the whole idea of meat eating, which, I mean, we kill billions of animals every year um, um, in the belief that we need to eat meat in order to survive. But um, when we shorten the physical lives of living beings, whether they're animals or human beings, we make ourselves, we predispose ourselves to having our own lives shortened. So when hundreds and thousands die in wars and accidents and natural catastrophes, one of the reasons, and not the only one, but one of the reasons can be our attitude to the animal kingdom, that uh, we are inflicting enormous amounts of suffering on that. So, um, and if anyone's interested in reading a little more about that, I would recommend the book, The Ideal Food by Martinus. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> I have a question. Um, yeah. Within the idea of Martinus cosmology, when we have um, more lives, when we have reincarnations of you know those types of things, do we always come back as human beings, or are there other types of things we come back as as an animal or something like that? No, uh, I mean, uh, he said that we go forward in evolution. If, so if we came back as an animal, that would be going back. And um, I mean, you have de developed so many talents for being a human being. So um, language, among other things, and various other things, and intelligence and the humane ability and so, so on. Um, 
So you will become, you'll come back as an increasingly involved, evolved human being uh, and eventually become a totally loving human being. Um, so it only goes forward. Uh, so uh, even though, I mean, you could come back and have a life that was rather difficult. You could come back with a lot of chronic illnesses or difficult relationships or come in, into a, live in an area with lots of natural catastrophes and so on. And it could seem like you were going backwards, uh, but you're not, you're getting intense personal teaching. Sorry, I knocked my mic over. Um, so um, yeah, you only go forward. You only come back as uh, uh, and the next step ups, so to speak. Thank you. Yeah, any other questions? <laughs> Mary? Yeah? It's Jeff. Yeah, hi, Jeff. Hi. What, what's the best way, if I want to learn more about Martinez, what avenues are available? Well, there is our homepage, martinez.dk. All our books, are, if you go into the English part of the homepage, um, our homepage page is in many languages because we translate Martinez into 22 languages at the moment. You can go into the English part and you'll find all our books online. If you want the main door into his work, I would read the first volume of Leave Its Boat, The Book of Life. Um, it's a thick book. But there are also, um, on our uh, homepage, you'll find, uh, if you go uh, on, the, on the left side, you'll find um, something called Martinez's writings. If you go in there, you'll find a lot of articles uh, if you want something short to read. Otherwise, there are, um, there are short, simple explanations on our website. I, I, would, go ex I would explore the website um, um, and see what takes your fancy. Uh, I mean, if you're interested in something like um, prayer or meditation, there are two little books uh, with those titles that are on the homepage. If you're interested in food, there's the idea of food. But if you're interested in the, in the main world picture, I would, I would start with Leave It's Boat, volume one. Um, but, um, um, and there's also, uh, in English, we have four volumes of the eternal world picture where these symbols are explained. Um, the analysis in, this, in these so-called symbol books are rather concentrated, where in Levis' book, The Book of Life, you get more sort of details. So, um, yeah, it, it depends whether you like reading short things or long things, but I, I prefer the, the main entrance, the first volume of Levis' book. <laughs> so... You also have a podcast, correct? I have a podcast. It's called the Martinez P Cosmology Podcast. You can find us um, on uh, Facebook and you can find us on Apple Podcasts um, and on YouTube. Uh, the Martinez Cosmology Podcast.com is, is our homepage. So um, uh, I. I, I interview various people about Martinez's ideas on that podcast. Um, I've been a bit handicapped because of the um, pandemic. So I've put up some lectures given by a friend of mine, Ole Tergus in, in English. Um, so um, there you can, there, I think I have, is it 47 or 37? I can't remember episodes um, online at the moment. So you can go in and have a look at the different titles and see what takes your fancy. So. Depends what you're interested in. Yeah. Any last call for questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much again, Mary. This was fascinating and uh, beautiful. It was inspiring and uh, really yeah. enjoyed it. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for joining from different parts of the States and Canada, yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.